Good morning, good morning without warning. It's me, Doug, Double Bad Doug Beatty, a.k.a. The Broke Barista, and we're responding to the Death Wish Coffee review of the Bripe uh, posted on the YouTube on the interwebs. So what we have here is our Bripe and our one-handed folder here. Yep, we got our flame on. And there we go, flame on. We have seven grams of freshly dropped roasted coffee. You can see there in the strainer, and you can see I'm not really good at roasting yet. Um, I'm really stubborn about using an iron pan because I'm a cook and it's fun, but it doesn't give you a real even roast or a real good roast, and it's not really drinkable right after you roast it, but I like to drop a few beans and hit them in the bright. I like all kinds of different coffee flavors. So if we only put in 30 milliliters of water in our 7 grams of coffee, we're not going to fill the bripe up exactly, but it's going to heat a little bit quicker. And there's a method to our madness there. Now, there's no right or wrong way to do this. The best way to make coffee and the best coffee in the world is the coffee you like to drink the way you like to drink it. This is just one way to do it. I do have a little issue with um, the Death Wish people authoritatively stating that you're just going to get some grinds in your coffee because it's like Turkish coffee the first time they've used a bright. They've just like unboxed them and started spouting off all this expertise. Oh, and it tastes like pennies and this. and Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and the guy that invented it left the toilet seat up too. But anyway, yeah, if you use the bright for a while, that uh, brash copper taste goes away. Ooh, look at that bubbles. Look at that coming up. Isn't that beautiful? All that CO2 releasing. We're about at 170 degrees. Now, I might let it go right here, but uh, the bright inventor thinks about 180. Let's call it 175. Let's compromise. Let's be reasonable. Because there's no right or wrong temperature, you can cold brew in this, you can make tea in this, you can make hot cider, you can make a shot of just about whatever you want to make in this. Now at this point, we would be waiting for our bright to cool down. So, hmm, doing this without spilling it with one hand is going to be a little bit of a journey, but I think I've got a method here. Yeah, buddy. Alright, set it on the stand right there. And now we're going to take a little bit of cool water see if I can do this Woo! it's weird looking in here doing this and dump it right on top there we ain't stirring nothing and look at that the thermometer is just coming right down to 140 our perfect drinking temperature you can see there's a lot of ground suspended in the foam and I'm not gonna obsess about that and worry about stirring that down what I'm looking for is the sweetest least bitter shot I can get so let's check this out here Okay, that's uh, pretty damned outstanding for freshly roasted coffee. And that's just one more way to use a bright. <coughs> but there are no fines in my mouth. Now, the grind setting I'm on here, usually I just use my regular espresso grind setting. Um, I run a flare. So on the J-Max, it's going to come out right about there at that 8, one full rotation and 80 clicks. Um... You're looking at 170 times 0.8 microns, whatever size that gives you. That's about what works in my flare. So we're just going a little bit coarser than that, about 40 microns coarser, 50 clicks. And uh, that's a very nice bright. You can see that it very quickly gets down below um, extraction temperature. And I like to consume it fairly quickly because you just don't want a lot of wet time on there. But uh, that's my response to Death Wish Coffee. Uh, no, you don't get fines in your mouth every time you use the Bripe just because it's like a Turkish coffee. And I'm sorry, Death Wish is not the world's strongest coffee. I've got some Vietnam Robusta in a bag in there that will kick Death Wish's ass for, you know, dark flavor, caffeine, strong taste, whatever you want to say. There's no such thing as the world's strongest coffee. What you have there, kids, is a fairly solid organic bean uh, sold in second wave coffee fashion at a fairly good price, but it, it ain't no bargain, okay? For a dollar an ounce, it ain't hard, even up here in Appalachia, to get specialty grade, locally roasted coffee 
with a roasted on date. You guys are selling bags with a best used by date, calling it some kind of organic fair trade premium coffee. The fair trade is basically a bunch of virtue signaling. It does guarantee the farmer a certain price for their coffee, but it ain't the end of the world. It's not direct trade. That's the way to go. And uh, as far as the quality of it, having a roasted on date, that is some Starbucks slash Folgers slash Maxwell House level of it might suck to drink this uh, customer care. So, uh, Death Wish, um, if you want to be the strongest coffee in the world, you're going to have to have Robusta if you're talking about caffeine. That's just scientific. And uh, flavor is subjective. But if you had a roasted on date instead of a best used by date, I would definitely buy more of your beans if I didn't feel like roasting. Um, if I've got to go with a best used by date, I'm probably just buying the cheapest beans I can find on Amazon as a prime customer to make sure I can return them. And that ain't going to be you. So good luck, kids. Uh, learn how to write before you make authoritative reviews. And uh, strongest coffee in the world, Pfft. citizen, please. Peace now.